Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome back to the Natural Super Kids podcast. Jessica Donovan here. Today we are talking about nature deficit disorder. This is a term that I came across fairly recently and it just really, you know, pulled everything together for me because whenever I'm researching a particular kind of um, area of kids' health, whether it's gut health, whether it's immune health, whether it's mood, sleep and behavior, which has been sort of the theme of our podcasts recently, and also the topic of the masterclass that I've put together, the brand new masterclass that if you're listening to this in real time is happening this week. Hopefully you're registered. You would have heard about it at the start of this podcast if it's still you know, available and relevant for you. So as I'm looking into and doing some research on mood, sleep, behavior, um, I come back to the fact that more time outdoors, time in nature is so beneficial for so many different areas of our kids' health. And I came across this article that was talking about nature deficit disorder. So I want to talk about this in general terms, as well as how you know, why this is a problem for our kids these days and how this specifically links to problems when it comes to our kids' mood, sleep and behavior, whether that is, you know, a particular condition such as ADHD or anxiety um, or depression, or whether it's more that kind of low key, those low key kind of challenges, the irritability, the mood swings, the defiance, the learning difficulties, um, because I think all of these things are really relevant um, to this nature deficit disorder. So nature deficit disorder is a term that was coined by an author, Richard Louvre, in his book, Last Child in the Woods. And I have not read this book. It sounds really interesting, but it's to describe the phenomenon of children spending less time in nature and the resulting negative effects on their health and well-being because of that. So it's not a formal medical diagnosis, of course, but it's a growing concern among health professionals and educators um, about the impact of decreased exposure to nature on children's physical and mental health. So there are several factors that are contributing to the development of nature deficit disorder in children. Things like increased urbanization, a shift towards sedentary activities, um, technology, um, and changes in parental attitudes and practices around, you know, the safety of kids being out and about on their own um, and outdoor play in general. I think also we've just become so busy that it you know, it's dropped off the priority list. But research shows that spending time in nature has so many physical and mental health benefits for kids, including reduced stress levels, improved cognitive function, better sleep quality, and overall improved emotional well-being. And on the other hand, lack of exposure to nature has been linked to a range of negative health outcomes in children, including obesity and overweight, of course, issues, um, ADHD, anxiety, depression, and we'll go into some of the, the research in this episode as well. So what do we do about this nature deficit disorder? We want to to be encouraging our kids to spend more time in nature, engage in outdoor activities. Um, But I know as a parent myself, that is harder said than done. And this is not exclusive to kids, by the way. Um, You know, this is very relevant for parents and adults as well, because, you know, more time outdoors really benefits our um, health and well-being as well. And when you look at the stats, you know, it's really concerning. I've shared this before, that children in this generation are spending, you know, on average half the amount of time outdoors 
that as we did as children, as, as our generation did um, when we were kids. And um, in, in 2017, 2018, there were just 19% of children aged in that 5 to 11-year-old bracket that met the National Physical Activity Guidelines of at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity per day. And my guess is, you know, five years or so later, six years later, that has probably, you know, that that percentage has probably decreased. Children aged 5 to 17 spend an average of 2.6 2.6 hours a day on screens such as TVs, computers, tablets, smartphones, and only one in 10 children in this age bracket, 5 to 17 year old, meets the Australian guidelines for screen time, which recommend no more than two hours of recreational screen time a day. And there was a study done in 2017 by Planet Arc that found that only one in five Australian children spend more than two hours per day playing outside compared to previous generations who spent so much more time outdoors. And I think as parents, you know, we intuitively know and we can clearly see the benefits of outdoor play and time outside, time in nature have on our kids, you know, really short in the short term and in the long term. And there's research to suggest that um, that kids with ADHD have let a reduction in symptoms when they spend time in natural outdoor environments. Um, you know, there's been research to show that natural environments have a positive impact on children's overall mental health, including reduced stress levels, improved emotional well-being. Um, We know that there's reduced symptoms of anxiety and depression, as well as improved self-esteem and resilience when kids spend time outdoors. Um, You know, it leads to more feelings, like more of those positive emotions, such as happiness and gratitude in both children and adults when they spend time in natural environments. Um, And there was a study published in the Journal of Environmental Psychology that found that exposure to nature during school recess time, which, you know, should be a given, right, but it's becoming less and less common, was associated with improved mood and reduced aggression in children. And that's just a very short time, you know, in re- at recess time. So let's talk about some of the specific effects that time out in nature has on our brain chemicals as humans for both children and adults. So when we spend time in nature, it boosts our serotonin. Serotonin is that neurotransmitter, that happiness neurotransmitter. It regulates mood and sleep um, and exposure to natural environments has been shown to boost serotonin levels. And I think we've all experienced this, that feel good feeling that we have after being out in nature. Um, and, you know, better, uh, better serotonin levels leads to a reduction in things like depression and anxiety and an overall improvement in mood. Um, time outdoors in nature increases another neurotransmitter called dopamine. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter that's associated with pleasure and reward And um, spending time in nature can increase dopamine levels, which leads to feelings of happiness, um, motivation, fulfillment, uh, reduces cortisol levels as well. So cortisol is a hormone that's released in response to stress and exposure to natural environments has been shown to reduce cortisol levels, which can help to reduce stress and anxiety. And I know for me personally, you know, nature is the perfect antidote to stress. You know, when when my stress levels get high, a walk out in nature, even if it's just a quick one along the beach um, or around the scrub uh, that is local to me, I just feel so much more in control of everything when I get back from from a walk um, and less stressed. So also time in nature increases endorphins, which are natural painkillers that are produced by the body. Um, And spending time in nature increases these endorphin levels, which can help to reduce pain and also improve mood. And time in nature improves our brain function overall. So exposure to natural environments has been shown to improve cognitive function, 
including attention and memory, which can lead to improved performance in learning, at school, and also other areas of life, of course, as well. So as you can hear, you know, overall spending time in nature has such a positive impact on our brain chemistry, on our neurotransmitters, and to our for our kids' overall mood, behavior, um, and sleep. And these benefits can have lasting impact on a child's overall well-being. Now, I do want to talk specifically about ADHD because, you know, uh, I personally have, have seen firsthand with clients how beneficial more physical activity, more time outside, more time in nature has for kids with ADHD in terms of, you know, their behavior, their mood, their attention, all of those things. So there is growing evidence to suggest that spending time outdoors um, does have a positive impact on the symptoms of ADHD. Um, it, it helps to improve improve attention. So studies have shown that spending time in natural environments can improve attention and reduce the symptoms of ADHD. Um, there's also improved executive function that results from spending more time outdoors. So executive function refers to a set of cognitive skills that are necessary for goal-directed behavior, such as planning, organizing, and self-control. Um, and spending time in nature has been shown to improve executive function in children with ADHD. Um, and, you know, it in improves that working memory and um, inhibitory control in children with ADHD and reduce stress. We talked about that already, but specifically um, for ADHD, this can be particularly beneficial because when kids with ADHD you know, have those increased levels of stress, of cortisol, then symptoms can become worse, um, can be exacerbated. So if we can reduce that stress with a simple kind of activity of spending more time outside, uh, then that's going to be a good thing. So if you have got a child who has an ADH diagnosis, like, of course, spending more time outside is important for all kids, but if you've got, you know, if you've got a child that has been diagnosed with ADHD, it is even more important, um, you know, and we're, we're talking a lot about those benefits on mood, sleep and behavior. But as I said at the start of this podcast episode, um, you know, there's so many benefits to immune regulation, immune development, the strength of the immune system, the gut, the gut microbiome um, when it comes to spending more time outside, which all, you know, really benefits um, indirectly that our kids uh, mood, behavior and sleep as well. And then there are the countless benefits of outdoor play on sensory integration. So this is a common, you know, more becoming more and more, more common sensory processing disorder or um, just general sensory issues when it comes to kids. And this can, you know, look like a whole range of things when it comes to kids. I mean, fussy eating is very linked to sensory integrate integration. You know, those kids that just... Um, you know, become really overwhelmed, easily overwhelmed um, in loud environments uh, tells us that they're having some issues with, with sensory integration. Of course, sensory processing disorder or issues with sensory integration are linked with uh, ADHD and kids on the spectrum as well. And outdoor play has so many benefits when it comes to sensory integration because Kids are exposed to different sensory stimuli when they are outside, including, you know, the sights and the sounds and the textures and the smells. And this exposure can help to develop and refine their sensory processing abilities, leading to improved sensory integration. That movement um, that is that is so natural in that outdoor environment, uh, like running and climbing and jumping, these activities provide children with um, important skills when it comes to body awareness and coordination. We've already talked about nature's calming effect. Um, and spending time in natural environments has been shown to have that calming effect on the nervous system, reducing stress, reducing anxiety, which can be particularly beneficial for children with sensory processing difficulties who may easily become overwhelmed by sensory stimuli. 
There's also those opportunities for social interaction outdoors, um, which are important for developing social skills and emotional regulation. And of course, that outdoor environment is multi-sensory. It's, it's the ultimate multi-sensory play experience. Um, so things like playing in the sand or the water or the mud, these experiences provide children with opportunities to explore and manipulate different textures, improving their sensory processing and integration abilities. So sensory processing is a whole nother topic, but it's very commonly linked with sleep and mood and behavior issues in children. So I, I did want to sort of talk through those benefits, you know, those specific benefits when it comes to sensory processing abilities, sensory integration, um, you know, and, and the benefits for kids who have been who, who have been diagnosed with sensory processing disorder. So I think I've harped on and repeated myself enough to really get the point across that playing outside, um, you know, being immersed or exposed to nature regularly is so good for our children in so many ways. And even if they don't have particular issues that we've talked about, ADHD, sensory processing, anxiety, mood issues, it's still really important that we that we encourage our kids to play outside. But as a mum of two, now two teenagers, I know this is not as easy as it sounds, particularly with some children. I've talked quite a bit about the differences in my kids. You know, my eldest um, is super active, outdoors all the time. Uh, he's very, um, he's a mad mountain biker, which I just, you know, love that he's got this hobby that he loves that exposes him to, to nature and outdoor environments. On the other hand, I've got another child, my daughter, who is much more comfortable in an indoor environment. So it takes a lot more time and effort um, to get her to spend enough time outside. And I will admit that, you know, going over all of all of this information has reminded me that, yeah, we need to make some changes to make sure that we're all spending some more time outside because of these huge benefits for our kids. So I want to just talk about some practical ideas of ways that we can get our kids outside. And one of the key things that I often talk about is, you know, the best way to get kids out, outdoors is to go with them, no matter what age they are. And that outdoor environment, that exposure to nature is so good for us as adults as well. So maybe we can make it a family project to spend more time outside together as a family. Um, you can do things like provide outdoor play equipment. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, expensive or, um, you know, like big or anything like that. Just balls and frisbees and um, skipping ropes and bikes and scooters and um, skateboards. You know, these things, having more of these things on hand and actually using them can make a big difference in terms of getting kids interested to be outside. Plan outdoor activities uh, as a family. You know, go for picnics, go for walks in recreational parks or national parks, camping trips to encourage your kids to spend more time outdoors. And the side benefit of that is you get to spend more time outdoors as well. Setting aside and prioritizing time for outdoor play is super important. You know, our kids are so overly scheduled these days and so are we. We're busy. Our kids have got all the activities, but we really need to prioritize outdoor playtime. Um, so maybe you schedule it on a Wednesday afternoon or whatever it might be and a, and a Sunday morning it's scheduled. We are spending time outdoors, rain, hail or shine. We're going to find an activity to do outside. Um, so, you know, be, making it a part of your weekly routine can really help. And maybe you can take it in turns to choose something that you do outdoors, get the kids involved and excited about what you might do and places you might visit. Of course, we need to be a role model. If we're not engaging in outdoor activities, then our kids are probably less likely to do it as well. So things like, you know, getting out in the garden or going on hikes, um, children are much more likely to engage in outdoor play if they see their parents enjoying it. And sometimes they might not have a choice. We're going on a hike this weekend. <laughs> um and so they come along. Make it fun. So parents can make outdoor fun play, outdoor play 
fun (laughs) by incorporating games and activities. You know, if your kids aren't very excited about going for a hike, maybe you can find a a trail where there's a lot of climbing or, you know, it's a bit more interactive with ropes. Um, I know when my kids were little and I wanted to go, was on hikes with them, I'd, you know, we'd have songs that we would sing or um, those sorts of things. So you want to try and make it fun, not like a chore. We have to do this. We have to get outside. It's good for you. That's not going to cut it with kids. We want to make it a positive experience. Um, we want to make it fun in whatever way we can. Uh, and and sort of I, I just wanted to reiterate this point that we want to allow for unstructured play. So I sort of alluded to this when, I'm, when I talk about set, set aside time for outdoor play, but it doesn't always have to be planned. You know, you can have that unstructured play. Um, you can set up some little, little things in the backyard um, and just let kids go for it. You know, if you've got a little, a little dirt patch, can you add some water to that dirt patch? And little kids can have hours and hours and hours of fun, you know, with a, with a muddy puddle, um, and some, some trucks or some animals or whatever they're into, uh, mud kitchens, you know, can be a really good, good thing to set up and you can keep them really basic. You don't need to make things complicated. There's so many resources online to help us to set up sort of outdoor play stations for kids. And obviously this really will, will be variable depending on the age and the interest of your child. And what I find after the initial whinging from kids that, you know, they don't want to go outside, they're tired, they're whatever, (laughs) you know, it always leads to a fun experience. Well, more than more than often, um, it leads to a positive and fun experience. So you've kind of kind of kind of got to break through that, um, you know, that sometimes negative response from your kids. Um, and, you know, depending on what age they are and the, 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 the whinging, um, that can sometimes happen and break through that and, and create that sort of positive experience. I know this is not easy, but, you know, reading up and coming across this term nature deficit disorder just made me realize how important, I mean, I, I know how important outdoor play is for, for kids, but it just really kind of summarized, yes, this is it. Our kids are experiencing nature deficit disorder. And I would argue that the majority of kids um, these days are, are not spending enough time outdoors, active in that natural environment. So I hope this episode has inspired you and given you, you know, some really concrete reasons as to why, you know, this is such a good idea for our kids. I would love to hear from you. Send me a message on Instagram over at Natural Super Kids. Just send me a DM, a direct message, and let me know how you've enjoyed this episode. Um, and tell me, what is it that you are going to do with your kids based on the information um, in this episode? I'd love to hear from you. Welcome to the Natural Super Kids podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hey, 